set up a furniture design practice and I thought it would be a good idea to make a studio space because I couldn't afford one. So I phoned up some guy at London Underground, Barry his name was, and he, he used to uh, scrap the trains and buy new trains, but they were all like his babies, his children. So I came along and said, can I turn them into studios? And he said, yeah, sure. It was a garage and they, they, a mechanics had allegedly done an insurance scam so the whole thing was full of burnt out cars and trucks and it had basically burnt most of the roof off. For weeks we were just clearing skip after skip after skip full of rubbish. We did like little TV and film and photography stuff, it was like local designers and, and artists could rent the place out for like 200 quid and we were thinking yes great there's some money and we could put a lock on the door and <laughs> that kind of rattled on for a little bit. I oh, could put some lights up in the roof. When we started, there weren't nothing here. Um, there was a four walls and a rooftop and trains on top. When I say there was nothing around, there was nothing to make this a proper gig venue. There was no house PA. Um, lighting was very minimal. There was no dressing room. <laughs> Orvo had a vision that if you put a load of creative people together you would end up with a beautiful utopia. Whereas actually you ended up with something that was like a dystopia, a massive sort of mess, looked a bit post-apocalyptic. Unfortunately human nature meant that we all defaulted to the lowest, <laughs> the lowest standards in everything. So we had to put a bit of structure in and uh, I mean it's basically, it's not really structure, I like to think of it as enabling people. So it was like a whole like 12 hours of craning all of this up and, and at the end we were really pleased with ourselves and we went home and the next morning we came there and it was just plastered in graffiti like ninjas coming over the rooftop. I mean we're like 10 metres off the ground or something, it's vertical brick walls, I mean they're in impressive. After a while they took this bridge out which then left a big wall there and um, Ben Ein phoned up he said do you mind if I paint your wall? And we were like yeah okay and um, we came back the next day and it just had vandalism in huge <laughs> in huge letters and uh, that was the beginning of that and that's been going that's been going ever since there's like maybe eight years of, of painting on that wall. There's a few people writing books for a while, loads of video artists, Loads of illustrators and that kind of Tons thing. Tons of photographers, jewellery makers. Fashion designers. We won some BAFTAs. Our tenants won some BAFTAs. Some BAFTA winners. <laughs> <laughs> I always describe this as like a potting shed in the clouds, this space here. It's really, it's quite magical to have something that um, feels so kind of artistic and a little bit um, different for Shoreditch. And it's probably what Shoreditch was many a year ago. And I feel like we're the last bastion <laughs> in existence. You can come here any day of the week and see anything from Inuit throat singers to hard techno to uh, opera from the Barbican. And I think that's quite special and quite unique. The Fortet event a few years ago was poss possibly one of my craziest. It was a daytime gig. And I turned up here at 10 o'clock in the morning and everyone was completely blottoed on the roof. And then we went downstairs and watched uh, Kieran Hebden uh, play. And as he was playing, they took the roof uh, panels off. So we had all this sunshine suddenly like, being cast into the venue. Uh, right um, in the early days, um, we put on a little secret gig for the Pixies and uh, that was the best for me. I mean, I'm of a certain age where the Pixies were my heroes, so having them playing in your own front room was kind of amazing. The Growler show was pretty extreme. Um, Fat White Family. <laughs> It was a bit like, you know, Beatlemania for the Growlers, surfing a drag queen over people's heads on a bass guitar case. We've got the Grime shows, which yeah, to me yeah, have yeah. been the most exciting shows we've had all year. I'm not even particularly a Grime fan. It's unavoidable, the, the kind of con contagiousness of, of how people are so into it and yeah. so dedicated. And I think, it's to me, it's kind of like a, an echo of the punk scene. You know, if you look at Death Grips, audience was very similar to the mm. Section Boys audience in the respect that when you actually had uh, when BBK and Skepta and Drake <laughs> came on stage yeah I thought to myself this is the closest I've ever got to absolute hysteria Village 
John's Grand ethos, I think, is uh, at the very core about freedom and creativity. That extends to everything, the music programme, reinvent the world, come up with a better way at, during changing times when there needs to be a better way. What I like about Village Underground is it may not be the, it may not be the smartest idea, it may not be the brave, it may not be the kind of like the most logical idea, but if it excites them, they give it a go. To, to come back and work for somewhere so vehemently independent is really refreshing. You know, in a, in a city and in an industry where it's constantly changing, it's cutthroat, people are treading over themselves to get the new, new acts. And you know, and people are taking huge handouts and huge slices of money from companies that have nothing to do with creativity, nothing to do with music, and nothing to do with cultural diversity. Working for Village Underground is, is a breath of fresh air. We kind of ran up against the four walls because we can't fit any more shows in here, so we are looking for other venues. We had our site open in uh, Lisbon. The Berlin project is like our kind of uh, almost happening, almost happening. So, so maybe that one will come off. Um, and then it looks good that we're going to Barcelona. I think that's going to be great. Um, we just got a few more trains that we've put onto lorry trailers and we're doing a mobile village underground venue that we're going to tour around the country, go to all the festivals, take that abroad. Um, that's kind of exciting. And we're looking at new programming as well, getting much more of the performing arts theatre stuff in that we used to do, um, much more of the kind of cerebral talks and debates and uh, trying to branch out um, artistically as well as in new venues. I talk quite a lot about inspiration and that being a really important thing for people individually but for society as a whole so I just try and make sure we put on an, as much stuff that's inspiring as possible and if you know if one person comes to a show at Village Underground and goes home truly inspired then that's that's our work done. Mm -hmm.